In today's Photoshop lesson, I'd like to show you how to make a contact sheet. In case you're not sure what a contact sheet is, it looks like this. This is a nine photo contact sheet, three wide, three high, with the name underneath. You can see the image name is underneath. Now let's do that in Photoshop. Let's start off by making a four photo contact sheet. Contact sheets can be lots of fun to use for instance if you wanted to pick out the best photo for an enlargement. You can also cut them up and make small photos out of them too. Anyway we have four of them here and here's how you make a contact sheet in Photoshop. Go to File, Automate and over here is Contact Sheet 2. We'll click on that. Up comes the dialog box. Now what we want to do is click right in this area here it says use folder no we want to use open documents remember we had four documents open and it says four files selected which is good so as we scroll down we'll see what else is in this box units is uh, eight and a half uh, inches or inches and the width is eight and a half by eleven so that's a normal sheet of paper at two hundred uh, pixels per inch that's good we use the srgb color space over here it says flatten all layers no i don't want to flatten because i want to put a little frame around them so we'll leave that unflattened let's see what we got down here it says thumbnails place across first that's good we'll do that but then what we want to do here is uh make it two because we only got four photos so we'll go two there and two here. So two columns, two rows. Okay, and over here in auto spacing, I'm going to leave that unchecked and leave the quarter inch by quarter inch for horizontal and vertical alone. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to rotate for best fit. And I'm going to use Time Roman for the font and regular. And then over here, you'll see it's eight point. So that box is ready to go. I think everything's good. So we'll click on OK. Now Photoshop will take those four images and make a contact sheet. And it's that easy. Um, should be able to do it once you've done it once or twice in a minute. No more than two, I'm sure, once you've got the photos laid out. So Photoshop is almost done. Three. And the last one's coming up now. There it is, right there. Okay. We have the four photo contact sheet right there. Now what we want to do is add the little box around the photo. So let's click on the first image. I'm going to click right here. Now I'm, I'm going to double click in this area right here. So I'm going to hit um, double click right here. And what that does brings up this dialog box. We want to add a stroke. I'm going to click right here. Now I've already done this. I think five pixels is good. I don't like it the full darkness, so I'm going to leave it somewhere in the middle. And black is good, and we're done. So we'll just say OK. Now if you notice, we only have one picture that has the box around it, the frame. So what we're going to do this time to add to the other three, I'm just going to hold the Alt key down. We have an option on the Mac. I'm going to click on the word Effects, the two letters F and X, drag it to here, drag it to here, and one more. Boom, we're done. So there we have it, the four photo contact sheet. Okay, let's make one more, but this time let's do with nine photos. Okay, we're going to go to File, remember where we go? Automate and Contact Sheet 2. Click on that. Now, I put nine photos in a folder. It's called Photos for Contact Sheet. So I already got the folder with the nine photos in it. I'm going to use every photo in the folder. Okay, I'm going to use the same size paper so I don't have to change that. Uh, resolution, I still think 200 is fine. And the only thing I do have to change is down here. I got to make this three, and I got to make that three because three times three is nine, and we have nine photos. Everything else is good. 
So we're going to just go with this. So we really didn't change much. By the way, if you want to, you can even save these and then load them later if you want to um, bring back the exact 9 or 12 or whatever you want to do on a template. You can use that and load them up and then you don't have to type them all in. Anyway, I'm going to click on OK. Now when I do OK, after I click on OK, Photoshop goes back to work. This time it's going to make nine, uh, take nine images and put them onto this contact sheet. And then we'll do the same embellishment with the, uh, with the stroke. I think I'll even add, maybe add in a bubble and emboss too. That'll be fun. And what the heck, let's even, why don't we even do the background? We'll put a little gradient in the background. So Photoshop is working away. It should be done in just a second. Okay, it's done. You can see Photoshop for each image had to take uh, had to make a text layer, had to make take the image and put a layer mask on it. You can see how the layer mask works. So it did quite a bit of work. This time we'll put the box around it, but let's first go ahead and embellish the uh, image one. So remember how I double clicked right in here? I'm going to do that again. Now don't be double clicking in the wrong spot. If you do, you're going to get another result. It's going to think you want to rename the photo or something. Okay, there's our layer styles. And what do we want to do? Add the stroke. I'll click on that. And I think I told you this time we're going to do a bevel and emboss. Okay. Now I can't quite see the bevel and emboss, so I'm actually going to go onto the photo and I'm going to right click and go up to 100% and now I can kind of move it. Now I can actually see what the uh, bevel and emboss does if I turn that off and on. Now if I don't like what I see I can move these sliders. Oh wait, I can't move them unless I click right here first. So if I click right here now the sliders I can move. And by moving these sliders by the way I can drag them or I can just move the mouse wheel and that changes them a little slower. So. So by moving these sliders, I'm going to get a different and a darker or lighter or uh, change the size. This will make it a lot bigger. So, and you can play with that. So I'm not going to horse around with it too long, but you can see you can add that little extra bevel and emboss to your layer style. And we'll say OK. So instead of holding the Alt key down or the Option key on the Mac on the little effects, I'm going to right click on the effects this time. Right click and you, sure enough if you look hard you'll find a paste layer. No, not paste. I got to copy it first. Copy layer style. See right there? Copy layer style. I want to copy the layer style. I click on that. Okay, now that is copied into the clipboard. Now I'm going to click on this image or this layer, excuse me, that highlights it. I'm going to have to hold the control key down or command on a Mac and select this one and this one and this one. See how I'm selecting all these? And this one and this one and this one. So they're going to have all those extra eight selected. I'm going to right click. Now we look for a paste, which is right uh, paste layer style right there. and wham they're all done so that I didn't have to like drag them eight or nine times so there is our contact sheet with nine images daughter can use this to pick out the image she wants me to make an enlargement of now there is one thing up here that's bugging me and this writing is too low so I'm gonna hit V and that's gonna bring up the move tool I'm gonna make sure I go up here to make sure auto select is turned on so it's checked. Okay, then I'm just going to go down to this layer right here, or this writing, click on it, and I'm going to drag it up. As I drag it up, I'm going to hold the shift key down. That'll keep it nice and straight so I don't go crooked. I'm going to take this one over here, do the same thing. I'm going to click, start dragging it up, hold the shift key down. Now when I get to the other one, see it puts a line under there for me. If I get it just right, like right there, boom. Now these are nice and even. Okay, that's it. I want to show you one more quick thing, and it has to do with the background layer. There's the background layer. I clicked on it. It's now selected. I'm going to go up here and get the gradient tool. Actually, I never go here. I just tap the letter G. It lights up the gradient tool, selects it for me. The color we have selected is kind of a tan, 
let's go foreground to background okay we got that and the foreground to background as you can see in this area is that tan and white okay and I'm just gonna I'll put the gradient uh, well if I just pull straight down from top to bottom I'll get like a gradient looks something like this but I think I'll go on an angle you can do that too I'll get a gradient that looks like that if I want to uh, if I don't want the gradient to erase every time I use it, I go to foreground to transparent. Now when I pull a gradient, it adds. It actually adds to the gradient that's already there. So I can add little corners if I want. And the last thing I want to show you before I wrap it up, you can get the diamond gradient. That's this one right here. We were using the radial or their circular gradient. No, the radial, that's what they call it. There's also a linear gradient that we use a lot. Anyway, we get the diamond gradient and just like darken a special area with just like a little crazy diamond behind it. So anyway, you can play with that too. Okay, to wrap this up, I'm going to tap the letter F on the keyboard. I'm going to tap it again. And then I'm going to hit Control-0. And that fills the screen. And there is the gradient with not there is the gradient there is a contact sheet with nine photos all done by Photoshop well thanks for watching I hope you learned something oh, PS how do you get out of this tap the letter F again and you're back in Photoshop that's it